When Robert George James was born, the United States of America consisted of 33 states. Radical abolitionist John Brown was finishing plans for his raid at Harper's Ferry, Virginia. Sam Houston was the governor of Texas. And Abraham Lincoln was a little known lawyer in Springfield, Illinois. In the course of Robert's life, he would witness the introduction of electric power, the automobile, telephone, airplane, radio, and motion pictures. He would survive one of the greatest natural disasters in history, and he would see the world go to war, twice. And throughout his life, to the amazement and sometimes annoyance of the people that were close to him, he pursued his ever-changing dreams relentlessly, with passion and unyielding commitment. Robert George James was born on September 8, 1859, in Chedworth, England. His parents, William James and Mary Ann Potter James, were married in 1851. Robert was the fourth of seven children. Robert grew up in this home in the village of Ashton Keynes. As a young man, Robert and one of his older brothers, Henry Hewer James, operated a bakery business in London. And it was in London that Robert met Anne Knight, a young woman that lived near the village of Chard. On April 17, 1883, Robert and Anne were married at the All Saints Church in London located only a short distance from the bakery shop where he worked. The first year of their marriage was spent preparing to move to the United States. A young couple they knew that lived in Galveston, Texas, had written them and encouraged them to come to America. At least part of why Robert wanted to leave England was because he didn't agree with some of the English family traditions that required the greatest opportunities to always go to the oldest brother. Anne also wanted to leave England, but she would never say why. Even 50 years later, this gentle and thoughtful woman would become agitated if someone pressed her to talk about the home she left behind. The voyage from England to New York took three weeks. After meeting the requirements to enter the United States in New York, they continued on by ship to Galveston, arriving on October 5th, 1884. Friends met them at the dock and helped them to get established. At the time, Galveston was the largest city in Texas and a thriving community. Almost immediately, Robert set out to find some kind of work for himself. On November 11th, 1885, the first child in this family was born, William Ernest, or Willie. By 1886, Robert was fully established and operating a business known as the English Bakery. On November 1st of 1886, Robert applied for citizenship and was confirmed on April 23, 1890. During the period of 1887 to 1890, three more children were born to the James family. Helen, known as Nellie, was born on January 26, 1887. 
George Samuel was born on September 10, 1888. And Robert George Jr. was born on October 15, 1889. The first great loss to come into the lives of Robert and Anne was the death of Robert Jr., who died just nine months after he was born. The child was buried at the city cemetery of Galveston on July 15, 1890. A second daughter, Annie Louise, was born on March 5, 1892. In the same year, Robert and Ann decided to change businesses and open the Galveston Steam and Dye House. In 1895, the family built a new home directly on the beach in Galveston. During the years that Robert operated the cleaning business, he met a man that was a master taxidermist. Robert made a deal with this man to teach him the art of taxidermy. Robert learned quickly, and before long he was on his way to building these new skills into a profitable business. And amidst these changes to the family's lifestyle, another daughter, Edith Eliza, was born on January 26, 1897. For some years, Robert had been collecting a variety of living and mounted animals, birds, and reptiles. He dreamed of creating a wildlife museum to share this constantly growing collection with the public. By 1900, his collection had grown to about 300 specimens, and he established the Lone Star Museum. The museum was located at the Olympia Grounds on the beach at 25th Street. Just 19 days before the museum opening, on August 14, 1900, Robert John James, Robbie, was born. The museum first opened its doors to the public on September 3rd. Along with the displays of live and mounted animals, Robert had created an underwater diving act which he performed each evening. Everything was going well for the James family. Six children, a home on the beach, and Robert was realizing his dream of being in show business. But five days after the grand opening of the museum, on Robert's 41st birthday, everything changed. On September 8, 1900, the most powerful hurricane Galveston had ever seen roared ashore. The family quickly realized that their beachfront home would not provide adequate shelter from the raging storm and decided to go to a school at the center of town. Robert tied the children to him and Anne carried the baby. They traveled by horse and wagon through the rising water and high winds. Debris was flying through the air. Dead livestock and human bodies were scattered along their path. When they reached the Rosenberg School, it was already crowded with frightened families. Black people were on the second floor of the building. Whites were on the first. The storm got progressively worse, and the windows in the school were blown out by the high winds and debris. The men in the building ripped up desks and held the wood against the window openings to reduce the pressure on the inside walls. Then the roof blew off, and the people on the second floor joined those on the first. Among them was a young man named Jack Johnson, who would later become a world heavyweight boxing champion. Johnson knew the James family and spotted Anne standing in a corner holding her screaming three-week-old child. He came up to her and braced his forearms over her and against the two walls. He said, don't you worry, Miss James, I won't let anything happen to you or your baby. He stayed there for hours. 
The storm pounded the island relentlessly throughout the afternoon and into the night. And in the morning, it was over. More than 6,000 people died in the storm. And most of the city was destroyed. The James family survived. But the home on the beach, the Lone Star Museum, and Robert's dream were gone. The family continued to live in Galveston for over a year and a half after the storm, but it is unclear where they lived. There was never any mention of damage to the cleaning business, and it is possible that they lived there during this time. In the latter part of 1901, the family moved to Houston for a fresh start. To be sure of certain support for the family, Robert opened a new cleaning and pressing business at the corner of McKinney and Main Street downtown. He also started advertising taxidermy services again, always with the idea of opening another museum. The family lived in the same building as the shop up until 1906. On January 25th of 1904, Mildred Lillian, nicknamed Tootsie, was born bringing the total number of children in the family to seven. In 1906, the family moved to a new home at 2105 Houston Avenue. Robert again started collecting all kinds of mounted animals and birds, along with living snakes of all kinds. His dream of a museum once again seemed hopeful. It was around this time that George Samuel joined the military. Young Robbie faintly remembered George coming to his bedside to say goodbye. Moving was a great part of the James family's life. In 1907, the family moved to number 12 Payne Street, a home located very close to Woodland City Park. At the park, Robert had his chance to open another museum. Along with the live and mounted animals, live snakes and birds, he started performing his diving act again in the lake water at the park. The live animals included two large bears, a wolf, a fox, several raccoons and several other smaller animals. There were also several deer which Robbie had to feed each morning. There was a crazy mirror house, a shooting gallery, and a ride Robert called Shoot-A-Shoot. -shoot. It consisted of a sled built like a boat which would slide down wooden rails and into the lake. On certain days, as an extra attraction, Robert would have a performer ride a bicycle on a tightrope stretched across the lake. The rider would then set himself on fire and jump off into the water below. In the evenings, Annie would run a Victor talking machine very loud to attract business. And if ticket sales were slow, Robert would get into the bear cage and wrestle with the bears to attract attention. The park operations were very profitable, and Robert was ready to move on and open up his own park. In 1908, the same year that Jack Johnson won the World Heavyweight Boxing Championship title, Robert formed the R.G. James and & Company and bought approximately 10 acres on Beauchamp Springs Bayou on the south side facing east on Houston Avenue. He moved the museum and other attractions to the new location and opened the Beauchamp Springs Temperance Park. He called it Temperance Park because no alcohol was served here. The city park served beer, and Robert had always objected to that. 
He did drink beer, beer that he brewed himself, but only one glass and only at dinner. The expense and time involved in moving the park created a financial strain on the family, and the park wasn't drawing in many customers. Eventually, since the land was purchased on credit, the whole operation was lost. In August of 1908, the James family's oldest daughter, Helen, known as Nellie, married Julius E. French. On October 26, 1909, Julius George, Robert and Anne's first grandchild, was born. By 1910, the family was starting to recover from losing the park and built a home at 3720 Center Street. This would be the first home the family owned since the home they lost in the Galveston storm. Robert opened a butcher shop in the 3700 block of Washington Avenue. And Ann opened a short order cafe and confectionery store in the 3600 block. Ann made soup and chili every day for the workmen at the nearby Houston Showcase Manufacturing Company. And she also made blocks of cold chili for Robert to sell in his butcher shop. Annie worked in the cafe waiting tables and helping with day-to-day -day operations. Both businesses were successful right from the beginning. Now the family was in a new home with plenty of room for everyone. Mother and father, Annie, Edith, Robbie, and Mildred. Robert continued his taxidermy work whenever he could in a building behind the family's home. In 1910, Robert secured a unique taxidermy project. The job was to mount a sperm whale which had been captured in the Gulf of Mexico near Port Arthur, Texas. Robert constructed a building near the Braze Bayou Landing on Broadway in Harrisburg to use to cure the hide and dissect the body. The whale's bones were taken to some pasture land in Pasadena and boiled to remove the fat. Once everything was prepared, the whale was mounted onto a wooden frame. The job took nine months to complete. The finished whale was placed aboard ship and taken upstream to Houston to exhibit. After Houston, the whale was exhibited in Beaumont and Port Arthur. Later, the whale was taken up the Mississippi River, then overland to a city park in Chicago. There, it remained on exhibition for many years until it was finally destroyed by a fire in the building it was stored in. In 1911, Robert bought his first automobile, a Maxwell. It had one seat, a canvas top, and a two-cylinder engine. Robert and Anne rode in front. Mildred sat in her mother's lap and Edith and Robbie rode on the toolbox in the rear holding on to the back of the seat. In 1911, the family also purchased five acres of land along Buffalo Bayou and started construction on another new home. Nellie and Julius also had another child in 1911. On October 3rd, Ethel Louise was born, Robert and Anne's first granddaughter. In 1912, William James married Daisy Fletcher, a girl he had met in one of the hat shops he worked in. Since the family was moving to their new home on Buffalo Bayou, William and Daisy moved into the home on Center Street and opened their own hatting business. Also in 1912, Annie married John Faust, a young man that had been courting her for a couple of years in 1913, the French family had their second daughter, Ruth Lillian. Around this time, Robert, always looking for something new, bought a boat. 
The family had a dock on the bayou right in front of the house, and a boat would provide a quick way to get to Harrisburg, where streetcars regularly ran to Houston. Also in 1913, Robert and Ann opened another short order meals and confectionery operation, located at the north end of the bridge over Bray's Bayou on Broadway. The boat, called Tootsie, named after Mildred, turned out to be the perfect way to get to and from the new business, a distance of about seven miles. Buffalo Bayou was now fast becoming the Houston ship channel. Dredges were working all along the bayou to clear a deeper path for larger ships. In 1914, Robert decided to buy a houseboat from a group of cavalry officers. The boat had complete living quarters and was double-decked with ample room for the family. The rear of the boat which was originally designed for the cavalry horses, was where Robert set up his taxidermy shop. A short time before moving the family aboard, Robert and Bob spent some time alone on the boat near Lynchburg, where they fished and relaxed. Bob later described this time as an experience they both loved. The boat was docked along Buffalo Bayou just south of Brady Island. But by early 1915, Robert decided that living on a boat wasn't such a good idea after all. He came up with a plan to move the houseboat on rollers to a lot he had purchased on Broadway near LaPorte Road. There, the houseboat was remodeled into two homes, the larger one for the family and a smaller one at the rear of the lot as a rent house. In 1915, three more grandchildren were born. Leonard Ernest James, James Bernard Faust, and Robert Earl James. In 1917, Oscar Henry James was born. Robert and Ann soon sold the property on Broadway and moved to a farmhouse near League City. This was the first time for the family to live in Galveston County since the storm of 1900. Also in 1917, Edith and William Holbrook were married. Bob James was working at the Harrisburg Bank, and Mildred was the only child still living at home. Robert and Ann were now starting to be known as Grandpa and Grandma James. Grandpa was beginning to think about retirement, but he did continue his taxidermy work. In 1919, on June 10th, daughter Annie and her husband John brought into this world a lovely daughter named Dorothy. But Annie was very ill. And five days after Dorothy was born, Annie died. Life on the farm didn't really suit Grandma and Grandpa James, so they sold the farm and moved to an old home in Pearland. Here, Robert had a small garden and an old barn to do his work. In 1921, Edith Ann Holbrook and Helen Gertrude French were born. Now, Grandma and Grandpa James could boast of five grandsons and five granddaughters. Bob James had been seeing a girl he had first met at her 16th birthday party. Her name was Mary Agnes Schultz. After four years of courtship, on July 11, 1922, they were married at the Holy Cross Episcopal Church of Harrisburg. A few days after the wedding, W.G., known as Dub, Holbrook was born. Soon afterward, Grandpa James had the urge to move again, this time back to Pasadena on Sterling Street. Here they built a home and several small rent houses. 
The rent houses and a small amount of taxidermy work made retirement complete. In 1923, two more grandchildren were born. On November 7th, William and Daisy James had their first and only daughter, Betty Louise. Twelve days later, Edith and William Holbrook had another daughter, Roberta May. Bob was given the privilege of naming this child. Roberta for himself, and May, the pet name he had for Mary Agnes. In 1926, Franklin Marvin Holbrook was born, and Mildred James married Ralph Blakesley, a longtime Pasadena resident. But 1926 also brought great sorrow to the James family. On December 22nd, Helen James French passed away. The James family continued to grow. In 1927, William Walton James was born. A year later, Ralph Glenn Blakesley was born. And five years after that, Mildred Ann was born. For Robert and Ann's 50th anniversary, their children and grandchildren all came to their home on Sterling Street to celebrate the occasion. In 1935, on August 30th, William and Daisy James suffered the loss of Oscar Henry, their third son. He was killed in a streetcar accident in Shreveport, Louisiana. In 1937, Lila Jean Schultz was born. She was a niece of Mary Agnes. In 1940, she was entrusted to Uncle Bob and Aunt May, giving them their only child to raise. Bob described her as the love and pleasure of them both. In 1940, Grandma and Grandpa James celebrated their 57th wedding anniversary. The H.J. Hines Company sent them a surprise package containing a variety of their products. Not long after the anniversary, Robert started having trouble with his health and was ill a great deal of the time for the next two years. He died on January 1st, 1943. He was 83 years old. Shortly after Robert's death, Anne moved to a home on South Randall Street in Pasadena. She lived alone and did all of her own housekeeping, and she had regular visits from her children and grandchildren. But she missed her husband terribly. She passed away on January 1st, 1948, exactly five years after the death of her husband. She was 84 years old. She was survived by two daughters, two sons, 16 grandchildren, and 21 great-grandchildren. In 1980, Robert John James wrote a history of his parents' life, which was read by Julius George French at a family reunion the same year. This presentation was based almost entirely on that document. Uncle Bob often said, you can do anything you want to do if you want to do it bad enough. Looking back on his parents' life, it is easy to understand why it was so important to him that people believe anything is possible.